Residential sections of Kyiv, including a 15-story apartment complex, were struck by Russian artillery. Explosions around the city caused heavy structural damage, with shockwaves from a blast tearing through an entrance of a subway station that had been used as a bomb shelter. Russia's defense ministry, boasting of military successes, provided this video of its drones targeting Ukrainian military facilities. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said his forces are continuing to repel the Russian advance, claiming to have shot down 100 of their helicopters. But he's again calling on the U.S. and NATO for help in the form of the no-fly zone. Former New York Governor George Pataki, just back from a humanitarian trip to Ukraine, said the people he met told him what they need most. They all said the same thing. What is it you most need? And it's close the sky. Close the sky. You heard that from virtually every adult Ukrainian you talked to. Uh, and that was their way of saying they needed a no-fly zone. So far, the Biden administration has rejected support for a no-fly zone. But the president did sign a government spending bill that includes more than $13 billion in aid for Ukraine. And next week, he'll travel to Brussels for discussions with NATO leaders about the Russian invasion. Putin's aggression against Ukraine has united people all across America. And unity in Europe, displayed by the leaders of Poland, the Czech Republic, and Slovenia, who boarded the train to Ukraine to meet with Zelensky and express support for the embattled country. China today shot down reports of a willingness to provide military assistance to Russia and accused the U.S. of spreading disinformation. The humanitarian crisis continues to magnify with more than three million refugees fleeing to safety. And among the mounting casualties, two more journalists have been killed. Fox cameraman Pierre Zazeski and reporter Sasha Kushnova. Reporter Brent Renault was reported killed on Sunday.